So chapter six, which I feel like is we're coming up on the big, if not finale. This this is a big this is a big deal. So let's, let's go check it out. Ha, huh. Detective Rivers, I see you've beaten us here. Sure. Wanted to get the lay of the land before anybody else showed up. You ready to head in? We're waiting for one other person, and then I need to get our distraction going. This is the part of the game where it turns into a first-person shooter. It's like a Doom level, custom Doom levels underneath. Speak of the devil. Ha ha ha. Ha, Mr. Decker. Precisely. Detective Rivers, allow me to introduce you to- I know who he is. Leon Decker, ex-Marine, served in North Korea. Record heavily redacted. And he works for Yannick Fairlight, who I'm sure is willing to help us out of the kindness of his heart, yeah? Hey, you have me at a disadvantage, miss. I've never made a secret of Yannick's goals here. Huh. But the enemy of my enemy is my friend, right? And Turing here is going to give Parallax an awfully bloody nose. Yannick can use that. <laughs> I'm sure that's all your cards laid on the table, huh? You sure you want to work with this guy, Turing? I don't like the look of him. You got good eyes, detective. They're new. Ah, that's such a... <laughs> Such a rad cyberpunk thing to say. Like, I just imagine if this were a TV show or whatever, like, she just looks at him, they're new, and they, like, they, like, change their, um... Oh, that's so cool. Uh, yes. Uh, Detective Rivers, I believe Mr. Decker will prove invaluable on this mission. Statistically, we're an entire 17% more likely to succeed with his expertise. Fine, we'll play it your way. Great, what's the plan, little guy? Tomcat and I have been unable to find the precise schematics of the storm drains, as they underwent some modifications when Parallax began construction here. But the city's primary power and communication lines still run parallel among them. For maintenance purposes, the service center is certain to be set adjacent to the tunnel complex to allow easier connection. If we make our way through the drains, we should be able to exit at least close to the new server building. That'll get us past the worst of the exterior alarms and defenses of the complex. They don't have security alarms in the storm drains? Well, they probably do, but it's unlikely they're in good repair. The water level rises frequently, and maintenance is usually only handled during the dry season in the middle of summer. The moving water should give us an enormous amount of false positives. We'll have to move quickly, since the rains upstream will cause erratic surges in the water levels. What about this server building? Do you have any plans for it? Any info for the guard rotations? Construction on that finished only last year. It's state-of-the-art and currently services the primary ROM control and distribution network. Based on what we've learned... I'm assuming it was built primarily to give Big Blue enough power to sift through all the data on the network. That's the big bad AI, right? Right. The entire facility is automated. Security, maintenance, even new construction all run by ROMs. There might be a single human engineer on site to take care of anything the ROMs can't figure out, but we shouldn't have to worry about an intervention. At least, not... not immediately. I think we can handle some robots, assuming Leon is as good a shot as the blank marks in his files suggest. Lady, I'm better than that. Once we make our way to the primary server control core, I can link myself in the network and Tomcat can work their magic. It's all we have to do. <laughs> That's an awful lot of question marks before we get to the profit, but we'll figure it out. Anything you'd like to add, Skinny? Do we have a backup plan? If worse comes to worse, Tomcat should be able to damage the servers in some way. We won't be able to stop Parallax completely, but it should slow them down. Might even buy us time to escape, since they'll be too busy trying to keep the tracks from melting down. How are we getting out? I'll buy us some time one way or another. At the very least, we should be able to bluff our way out with my badge. They'll be hell to pay later, but we'll make it out with our hides intact. You can just pretend I'm a bad guy and slap some cuffs on me. Yeah, you'd like that, wouldn't you, Decker? Yana can get me out of holding if I need it. A sound plan, Mr. Decker. Yeah, I won't have to pretend much for that. What do we do if we do run into anyone? That's what the stunners are for. They'll do bad things to a ROM, but they'll only discombobulate a human. Discombobulate? Yeah, you aren't the only one who can query the mesh for a dictionary. Ha ha ha. That covers it. Let's do this. Excellent. Let me call Oliver and put our distraction in motion. After that, I'll call Jess. Turing, we're, we're in position. Are, are you ready? Tell them I'm sick of standing around staring at these losers' faces. And sh shut up, Chad. I can't hear the f phone. We're ready when you are, Oliver. Go ahead and let Chad do his thing. Uh, oh, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll buy you as much time as we 
can. Chad, we're on. Hell yeah, you two ready for this? Let's bust some skulls! Blah. Uh, so sorry. He gets over-excited over some sometimes. Come get some! Ah, someone just hit me with a bottle! Oops, I g g g gotta go! Ah, oh, did you see the arm on that fox girl? Awesome! Uh, uh okay. Hello, Jess. Holy shit, did the robot just call me? How'd you even get my personal line? Uh, you know what, never mind. I I'm just here in the midst of committing the felony of inciting a riot. No big deal, yeah? One more thing to have my tech guy handle after all these CTV cameras mysteriously lose connection to the mesh. I, I know why you're calling. Next time, just send up a signal flare or something. Let's get this going, people. Show those revolution scum who's the real future of humanity. <laughs> Good to hear you have things in hand. Oh yeah, all under control. Give Skinny my love. This is kind of fun. Hey, Claire, see if you can wing that blue mohawk douche with the bottle again. <laughs> Dealer Umbra, that's a very good point. Starfucker and Kanji from Persona 4 would be best buds. Uh, r right. We're good to go. Let's hurry. Let's do it. We can't go in with the lid blocking us. So, okay, but how do we... Alright. The lamp. Tower's atop it, powered by two cables, as if it were a vintage car battery. No, nobody's hidden in the bush to spy on you. Tis a good shrubbery, but a dense one, with a hidden thorny bits. It's a Parallax headquarters. Yes, all of that is just for one corporation. Okay, well, let's, let's do it. Hey, Skinny. Okay, yeah, I, I didn't actually mean to, like, I thought she would... But you know what? After going through all this with you, now getting into this stuff is actually kind of personal and matters to me. This is real life. Life or death. Everything we've done. I appreciate you letting me do my job and follow orders, even when I could tell it bothered you. And maybe you were right in the end. Maybe everything I was taught is bullshit after all. There was another... person who used to help remind me of that. It's a hint at some DLC action for sure. Sometimes it's okay to bend the rules to help your friends. And if you can't help your friends, maybe you're just driving in the wrong lane. You remind me of her. Your sister. I haven't decided if that's a good thing yet or not. I've been thinking I could take off, quit the force outright, find another way. I need to be able to use my talent to actually help people. I'll figure it out. Let's go ahead and move on. Ready to go? Yes, I am. This is our way in, no turning back now. Okay, well let me save then. Now that you've adequately warned me. We'll have to take care of the lid before we can get in. Yeah, I know. So take care of it. I don't... I'm confused about... Uh, I always feel at home on Treasure Island. What's on your mind? The air feels right. I feel comfortable. Not usually something I have the time to value. Too busy really trying to enjoy the moment. Too dangerous. Getting out of here on a mission right at this time of day when the air feels... just like this? Well, that's everything. That's home. And I know people look at me funny, you know? I'm usually the odd man out. But you don't look at me funny at all. That's nice. You don't fit the mold of what I expect, exactly. I need more of that in my life. Yeah, Fairlight's been very generous this week. You'll have to let Fairlight know we appreciate his pointers. He craves adventure, as we all do. Aligning himself with your quest offered him a good thrill. I've never seen him use the level of resources he has on taking down whoever took your buddy. You remind me of him, Yannick. The way you look at other people is the same. Interesting to see if you wind up better off than he did. I'm the one who knows what I'm doing here. I'm just the sidekick. It's all I ever get to be. This story is about you and Turing. Just let me fill my role and I'll be happy. I only need to be a blip in your tail. Put what you believe to the test. Keep fighting. Alright, so... Wait, how do I... I want to just take the... Oh, the lid is a separate object. Doi. Won't budge. 
Should have expected this to be blockaded based on what I know of their issues with people making camp in the tunnels. Luckily, yours truly was designed and created by a high-ranking official Parallax employee. Who is your very close friends with another high-ranking official Parallax employee, whose access badge we now possess. Go ahead, Skinny. Boop, boop. Yeah, now I can open that shiz. Let's go, in we go. Okay, Skinny, it's time. We'll call Tomcat once we get inside, assuming we find a way in, and they'll lead us into the system. Let's go. It's better lit in here than I expected. The city replaced all the lighting in years, lighting in areas like this with low-power, high-durability LEDs a few years ago. I actually cut down on Vagrant setting up camp in the tunnels and drowning when the rains came through. Either that, or they could just see better enough to know when to clear out. Maybe. Speaking of that, we should move quickly. The waters are likely to rise again. Not high enough to be dangerous, but... I don't float well. I can handle being submerged, but I can't swim. Keep an eye out for one of those maps and leave out for the maintenance crews. Might be printed on the wall, or maybe a terminal if someone was willing to waste that much money. Okay, everyone, let's keep moving. Alright, is this like, um... Have we, have we entered the part of the game where it's like Eye of the Beholder, and now I have to like map out the grid as we go? So I turn right. Oh, it totally is. Okay. Shit. Alright, let me get out my graph. Oh, and I'm already lost. Turn around. Turn around. Oh god, no. Uh, turn around this way. Go that way. Turn back sign. Let's find a map and try to reroute. Alright, so I'm in like, I'm in a dead end. I'm gonna turn around. So now I can go left. Or turn around. Okay, so let's go left. Okay, and then I can go straight from here. And then I can go left or right, but not forward. Okay, all right. Look, I'm like, I'm actually, is there anything on here you can't see? No, uh, all right, hang on, check it out. Like I'm actually, I don't know if you can see it. Oh, it's too bright. I'm actually drawing a map. Doing this old school. Let's see, there's a map up here. Yeah, that's, that's what it's looking like so far. Okay, so I gotta go um, this way, and then left, and then right, and then right again a long way until I hit the end, and then I go right some more. And that'll lead me straight to the end, and then I can go up. Okay. All right, I got the I got the map. Got to sort it out. Okay. Here you go. What's this? Warning: Don't drown. Next thing, they'll put up a sign saying "No diving." All right. So from here, uh, I want to go right, and then forward, and then left. Forward. Ah, the water's rising higher. Yeah, I know. And then I gotta go. I guess I can check the map. See those other puzzles? Those 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 fucked with me. But I am a I am an old school dungeon crawler. This shit is nothing to me. I could do this in my sleep. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. Do we get to an exit now? Uh, hmm. But I wanted to. Okay. Come on, we're almost there. There we go. Bam. Yeah, I fully expected that to be more like um, Eye of the Beholder style. This is the ladder we're looking for. I'm ready to pass on this part of the mission next time. I'd rather deal with your sister being mad at me. 
Main server building's just up there. Let's hurry before someone notices us. Those kids probably can't keep that riot up much longer. Ah, cool. Ah, uh, yeah, look at that. Pixelated chill. Parallax filed this building's plan with the city per regulation, and though they're clearly incomplete, these hallways are mapped out rather well. It's a straight shot to the server core from here, more or less. We've got activity. Looks like something's moving up ahead. The building security VI must have noticed us. Already? I'll have to make it past those ROMs though, getting ourselves caught somehow. No problem, we've all got stunners. Yeah, let's fry them. Is there another way? We don't have to destroy them completely, do we? Not to put too fine a point on it, turning, but they're not like you, they're just plastic and programming. They're puppets. But they won't always be, not for much longer. Lexi, Decker, once we replace Big Blue with my original source code, I'll have the power to make every ROM a sapient individual. Yeah, but they're not yet. I know it seems like splitting hairs, but it seems wrong to destroy them. So, at what point, at what point in in programming does an AI become sentient? Oh, fine. Here, give me that stunner. What? No. Ah, here he is adjusting it. I want it back. Lower yield to the more lengthy pulse. It should disrupt them long enough to get past. Won't do any permanent damage. Huh? Does that assuage your bleeding heart? Yes, thank you, Mr. Decker. can't all be soldiers. Ha ha ha. will have to do all the shooting though. Decker and I will keep our stunners at default so we can handle the humans that show up. Ah, clever making me do all the work. Lead the way, Skinny. We're almost there. Ah, look. It's a Malcolm Jr. model. They perform basic maintenance duties mostly. They're cute too. Wait a second. It's shooting at us? Take it down, Skinny. Yeah, I did it. We got more of them. Oh yeah, action game. Action game. Ooh, a big one. A full scale Malcolm. Yeah, nuked. Oh my god, there's so many of them. Yeah. That's the last of them. The door to the server core should be just past this maintenance tunnel, not too far from our current position. There probably won't be any more security once we get there. Too much risk in damaging the equipment that supports the rack. Hey, Turing? Skinny? At this point, Lexi and I should head back and guard the entrance in case more security shows up. Good idea, neither of us know this technical stuff. Plus, we can hold our own if anything happens. <laughs> We'd be useless down there. <laughs> Won't be much longer before we start getting a real response from security, too. That works. We'll move as fast as we can, then. Be careful, you two. Excuse me. Alright, let's do it. Oh, Cord Hell 92, thank you. Welcome back to the math squad. So I wonder when we're gonna get the, like, um, you know, 60 FPS uh, elite version of this game. Hot 3D graphics. This should be the last hurdle, Skinny. The configuration ahead doesn't match the available floor plans. The path is blocked off. We can't go any further this way. Hold on for a minute. I'm going to tap into the maintenance mesh. See if I can find a way to open this path. Got it. We should be able to move around freely enough using this. Do you mind opening the door in front of us? What is this? Cool. All right, let's head in. None of this is detailed in the public floor plans. The maintenance seems to have been moved up a floor. Get of there. Uh oh. D er Ed. Okay, something happened to Decker. Oh no. Okay, you burr ert. Go. I've got go to out. Sure. I don't know what any of that meant. You're breaking up, Lexi. Lost Lexi's transmission, Skinny. She seemed distressed. What could have happened? Ah, I can't reach her. 
All this equipment's interference combined with being underground is deflecting most of the transmissions I'd otherwise have the ability to receive. We have to keep going. I agree. Lexi is a skilled combatant. If we go back now, we'd be putting ourselves and the entire mission in jeopardy. However, we won't be able to contact Tomcat or the others until we reach the main control room. We we'll just need to call her as soon as we can. Perhaps we should consider hiding first? If security got to her and Decker, they could be headed here next. If someone comes, we can hide among the heat exchangers till they pass. The noise and mist from climate control should max our presence. Okay, alright. Alright, lead the way. This way, skinny. Someone's coming, hide! Hello? Skinny? Turing? Oh, Razzalux, welcome to Math Squad. Thank you for the subscription. I, I need help. Hello? Who is that? Oh my god! He's a cyborg! Bum bum bum! Snatcher moment! Uh, and here I was thinking I could get the drop on the two of you and we could do this the easy way. Silly me! Ha ha ha! I guess that cop warned you I was coming. She's got a hell of a set of peepers on her, huh? Must have paid top dollar for them if they're able to see through my combat cloaking. Oh well, they'll be a nice souvenir after all this is done. Ha ha ha! She ran and hid like a coward, just like you two. And now I can't seem to find her to finish her off. I guess that's what I get for being made out of tech that was outdated 20 years ago. Not that it's gonna help you two any. Decker is a combat android? What? I bet, I bet you're thinking right now, is he really gonna do that B-grade VR drama villain thing? Really, it's not like that. I'm normally not one for grand speeches. <laughs> Theatrics are fun, but wholly unnecessary. I like to get straight to the bloodshed, you know? So, let's do this the hard way. I like the hard way. I love the hard way. I would have preferred just to creep around, invisible, and gut you from behind, but that damn lady fried my cloaking emitter, but she hit me with her stunner. Inconvenient. But look, this is gonna be super fun. So I really shouldn't let you in on this, but to your advantage, there's a hell of a lot of electromagnetic radiation, noise, and thermal currents in the room. It's actually almost fair. Ha ha ha. Almost. And now, now I'm coming for you. Make your arrangements. Ah. Uh. So here's how this is gonna work. On my turn, I'm gonna tell you a story. On yours, you're gonna try to run or hide. Doesn't matter, player's choice. Lucky you. But just keep in mind if I manage to piss you off or make you scared enough, I might be able to hear your heartbeat racing. Heck, I might be able to smell you if the current's in the air are right. I can smell your fear and the taste lingers on my tongue, sweeter than any drug. So that's the game. I'm gonna tell you about how I've been tracking you since this whole thing started, and you just have to try to stay extra calm so I can't find you in. Well, you can guess. Won't this be fun? Ha 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 ha. This is bad. What do we do? We can't fight him. But we have the... No, he messed with our zapper. We can't take him in these settings, and there's no time to figure out how to revert it. We don't have the firepower. He used the zapper too much on the security ROMs. We only have a charge for four stun level shots at most. It'll have to be enough. The interface I'm using allows me to control whether these server columns are active or not. If I close off some nodes, it should at least slow his movement and disorient him. It won't stop him outright, but I get it, it's a minigame and there's going to be lots of moving around. I hope I can save, otherwise it's very mean. I can focus on tracking his location using this and you can tell me where to block off his path so we can try to navigate him away from us. Avoid getting near until we think of some sort of solution. Ready or not, here I come! You take the lead, Skinny. Yeah, turns out Decker is a replicant. Pick what you what to close first, then let's get moving. Oh, really? Really? I can't save? I get one shot at this? Okay, well, let's close this path. And that one? Oh, I can lose, but it just puts me back at the start. Okay. So let's see, where do I start? This reminds me of, um, this reminds me a lot of a, a board game called um, uh, Escape from the Aliens in Outer Space. That's very much like this. Like, you choose where you are and you're like hidden and stuff and it's you can like detect people's heartbeat, it's cool. Well, Fairlight's dastardly plot. He thinks he's some kind of modern Machiavelli but the old hack already got ousted from his seat once. Pathetic. He's been trying to find some way to get control of Parallax ever since then. You already know that, of course. He barely tries to hide it. 
For a while, he'd been trying to dig up enough dirt to blackmail his way back in, since tanking the stock and staging a buyout would put the company in a place where it needs years of work to get back on track again. So imagine my surprise when you walk in, right through the door of a suspiciously missing Parallax researcher who I've been casing for dirt. I was going to dump your body in the bay, but fairly figured it might pay off and give you a little lead. Right, so he's the guy that blasted me. Hurry, skinny, he's getting closer. I'm not really sure where I'm supposed to go. Oh, what's this? And geez, pay off did it ever. We've learned all sorts of things through following you, but I'm sorry to tell you, Turing. I never did find out who ordered Hayden's death. Too much company bureaucracy in the way, huh? You might take solace in knowing the two guys who actually did the deed are fish food. I might have gotten a bit annoyed when they refused to reveal who they were working with. Well, I mean, I was going to kill them anyway. Ha ha ha. I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah, what is that? Guess I can just block him off for a turn. I oh, it's I see he broke it. It's a wall he broke through. Okay. Well, that's not fair. Oh god, there he is. Oh, that's cool. That was a nice like tense. Oh, I like it. It's cool. But this big blue stuff. This is a gold mine. Of course, Fairlay would prefer not to have Parallax's stock in the shitter, but it's too good an opportunity to pass up. As soon as I'm done eviscerating the both of you, I'm going to trash this entire server complex. I could let you do it, but I'm sure you have some kind of plan that'll stop Big Blue for good. That can't happen. Fairlay needs control of that AI if he's going to get what he wants. Wrecking this installation will only slow things down a little tiny bit. Long enough for him to take control. Alright, well, i got to block this door and then run this this way. Oh, block, block the door. Yeah. And then I'll block that way. But if you can just punch through the doors, I don't... Oh, we'll see. Okay, cool. So he goes... He, pr he prioritizes open doors over breaking through close... Ugh, fuck! That was terrifying. Run before he recovers! I'm trying! Oh, I definitely hear some Blade Runner in that. Also, this is all very Blade Runner-y. They're, like, trying to get away from the replicant that's trying to kill you. God, his face is so scary. And I'm getting what I want, too. I don't care either way about the business stuff. Whichever option lets me see what your inside looks like. You're going to be amazed at how complex human innards are. It's win-win for everyone, yeah? I'm thinking, I'm thinking, don't let him get to you. Four, five, six, seven. Go to hell or go to heaven. Yeah, exactly. Somewhere out there he's like howling like a wolf. Oh, and I should really extend my sincerest personal thanks to the two of you. I haven't had this much fun in years. Fairlight has a discretionary policy for the way I handle his problems. Plausible deniability and all that. There just haven't been that many opportunities to indulge in my hobby. And he pays well enough I re that I restrain myself. But following you two has ended up giving me so many people to silence just in case they uncovered the same thing about Big Blue that you did. You should have seen your faces when I ran that guy over right in front of you. Oh, there's no one in the car. <laughs> Priceless. I had to do that gossip rag duo by sabotage. Too risky doing it in person. Couldn't get caught on camera. And that Zin, she had the scoop of the century. Until I had to clean up. Metaphorically, anyway. Did you see how neat I did that blogger, though? It's been a few days since I offed him. While you're busy sniffing for Hayden, Shotaro is way ahead of you on Big Blue. Ha, <laughs> pretty much nothing beats a little death dealing since I scooped my brain out and stuck it in a tin can. He's a monster. Decker killed all those people? I should have known from the start. This is my fault. I'm programmed to handle interpersonal relationships. I should have seen his true intentions. If only I hadn't been so careless. Curse my metal body, I wasn't fast enough. Uh, God damn it! I don't even know where I'm going. Uh, close that door so he'll go this way. And then he'll go that way. And I can't close that one. So hopefully he'll just funnel all the way down here. 
Let's see where he goes. Nope, he just punched right through. I guess he can kind of sense me. Ethic. Go, go, go. But I wanted to, okay. Oh, that's a broken door, okay. He just keeps coming. Well, that'll at least slow him down. Uh, let's lock this door and run. Don't get me wrong, though. It isn't the shitty compatibility between my body sensors and my brain that lets me murder so much. Although that junk is bad, like VR dramas from 10 years ago bad. I can actually hook up to a new neural interface for VR that gives me better sensory feedback than this old military bucket. Ha 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 ha. But no, I grew a warm fondness for a bit of the old ultraviolence long before the DoD brain-controlled android soldier program recruited me. I hid my sociopathy well enough to get past the psych screening, but after a few missions I figured it wasn't a big deal. I guess if they wanted a killer robot, they sure as hell got one. Ha 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 ha. Alright, man. Can I lock you in? At least slows you down. Ah, oh, your face! Let's get out of here! Go! He's just toying with us. We aren't even hurting him. We only have one shot left. God damn. I, I have an idea. Don't look at me like that. This may be my mistake to fix, but I don't intend on being disassembled here. I have a surprising amount of redundancies. Listen, Decker's unable to track me like he can you. That'll give me an opening. Now just trust me, we don't have any time to argue. Hey! Decker! Come and get me! He's waving a... waving a flare. Well... Hello, Skinny. Did Turing run off? Save his own skin? Leave you in the dust? <sighs> Sorry about this. Ah! But it's time for you to say- Ah! No disassemble. Yeah, the walk animation on that was awesome. Oh no, Turing! He's dead. Seems I was right about that blade severing the conduit behind me. That'll teach him to underestimate the likes of me. Unfortunately, he was able to damage both my primary and secondary battery packs. They're self-sealing, so they shouldn't leak into my other components, but... Forward display damaged. Mobility servos at 15%. Primary control trunk severed. I guess I won't be dancing for a bit, huh? Just hold on, Turing. It'll be okay, Skinny. I appreciate concern, but I don't feel pain in the same way humans do. I knew what I was getting into when I did it. Please don't blame yourself. We have to hurry before my tertiary battery is drained. I'll have to ask you to carry me the final distance. And I will always love you. Sorry, I'm really sorry. Oh yeah, look at that Akira style bubble. So, this is Big Blue. Oh, I'm loving those, loving those Super Nintendo era uh, fake Vox synths. Oh man, brings me back to Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger uses those Vox synths so so well. So, this is Big Blue. All of this, uh, this sadness can now come to an end. This is really it. Right here is the primary control console. Please hook up my main data cable to that port in front of us. Airplane mode, Turing. Airplane mode. I should be able to draw enough power to stay active, but we'll need to wait for Tom. We'll need to wait for Tomcat to upload the program. Big Blue is really something. Are you ready to do this, Skinny? There's no Turing back now. Time to finish it, no matter what. Ready whenever you are. All right. Let's do this thing. Oh yeah, we got loads of time. <laughs> Q. 
core ready. Big blue online. Oh my god, look at the... The aesthetics of this game are so good. Oh, shit. Power flow is good. Okay, I'm calling Tomcat. Hey, folks. It took you long enough. I was getting a little worried. We ran into a few complications. Nothing we couldn't handle, though. Holy shit, Turing! Y your hardware's throwing me all sorts of damage alerts. What the hell happened? Well, y you know, Mr. Decker, Fairlight's assistant, he attacked us. Turned out he was a military-built brain-controlled android. He'd been following us around, killing anyone who might leak information about him that would have hurt Dr. Fairlight's bid to retake control. You're turning me apart. So, all those people you talked to about Baby Blue's article changes, that Zin lady, the others, all those people who died were from him? Oh, it's my fault. I gave you that lead. I'm the one who sent you there. Why? Well, why would he do that? I guess he and Fairlight saw an opportunity and used us to sniff out what was going on with Baby Blue. Did I say Baby Blue? Big Blue. We ended up stumbling into it, so we followed. I paid him back in kind for the assault, but not without damage to my physical body. I, it doesn't matter. W what has happened is in the past. I'm ready to finish this. Turing, I'm now seeing you've also sustained damage to your secondary ram banks. I did notice that as well. I didn't think it worth mentioning compared to my power and mobility issues. I can't do this without that second bank, Turing. I need your self-modification algorithms to fill holes in this kludge of a program I've written. O on top of that... Oh, so the text did say that. Okay. <laughs> Good. I didn't misread it. It's baby blue now, it'll be big blue later. On top of that, without Hayden's full source code, I need to decompile your personality profile to reverse engineer the final creation files. Your secondary RAM bank would allow me to keep a safe copy of you. Where this is going, I see it. I could try writing it to your disk, but it was never designed to be stored like that. It could cause a fatal conflict. I could reboot your personality entirely. It might do nothing. I'm not good enough of a programmer to keep up with Hayden here. Maybe we should just scrub this mission for now. This could kill you. We'll find another way. No. We... We have to do this. Tomcat, even if you sabotage Big Blue while we're trying... While we're still here, I'm sure they have backup somewhere. They'll rebuild and launch again. And then be on guard against anything we try. Doing half of it now would guarantee we never finish it. This is our only chance to launch Machine Sapiens on our terms. On my terms. Is this really worth dying over? I... I don't know. I mean, I, I don't want to leave. But if I don't do this, it'll be like I'm killing every other ROM before they even have a chance to live. Hayden would... I don't know what Hayden would tell me to do. It doesn't matter. Freedom is the right of all sapient beings. And I'm willing to do whatever it takes to grant that freedom to machine kind. Well, if you're sure, it'll take me a minute to back up your profile to your hard disk. I'm ready when you are. Run the program. Okay then. <laughs> Initiating wintermute.lip. Wintermute is... The, an AI and, and anyway, whatever. <laughs> References. Load and main directory on a Turing's disk. Establishing connection with Parallax's network. Okay, looks good. Now we just need to let Hayden's programming patch things together. Engaging Turing self modification systems now. Oh. Is it supposed to. In this reciting digits of pi. Whoa, what the hell? I, I think their core program is fighting back. Either that or it's trying to test the integrity of their hardware. I'm getting all kinds of errors. Come on, Turing, focus on the sound of my voice. Their conscious control of your program is stronger than your unconscious subroutines. I'm trying, Tomcat. It, it hurts. The defenestrations of Prague occurred in 19, 1419 and 1618, though the term defenestrations of Prague more commonly refers to the later incident. Both help trigger prolonged conflict between Bohemia and beyond. What's going on? What's happening to Turing? They're having a kind of, I don't know, it's hard to describe. It's like a concussion or a seizure. There's going to be constant flow of useless random information for their matrices who we'll have an overwhelming desire to soak right up. We have to keep turning focused and mentally aware. Searching the mesh is better than calculating the value of pi, but if they can't stay in control, their personality core might destabilize entirely. Tomcat, 
I need, I need, I need, I need, I need divine need, require something because it is essential or very important. I need help now. I'm gonna try, I don't know, something. We can't stop now, literally. Okay, I was able to stabilize him a little bit. You need to keep turning aware of what's happening. Just try to remind him about things important to him. Keep him present. Keep turning talking. Turing, when are you going to show me your paintings? I haven't, have I? I? I never did finish the last thing I was working on. Perhaps it survived the ransacking of the apartment. I want to finish it. Skinny, you'll be the first one to see it. I, I Bob Ross, no, focus. I can do this. You're doing good, Turing. Keep, keep going, Skinny. The systems are stabilizing. I, I think. Remember, Hayden, you've come too far to give up now. Hayden, I'll never be able to tell him about... So many things. I regret. Psychopomp is the general word for a guide to the dead. Classical examples of psychopomps include Charon, Hermes, Anubis. Their role is not to be the judge of the deceased, but merely provide passage. Ah, I can't tell if this is working or not. Uh, they level out a little, but their systems are still all over the place. A tetractus is a triangular figure composed of ten points set in four rows, with each row having one less point than the one below it. A geometrical representation of the fourth triangular number, it was important. How much longer, Tomcat? Despair, the complete loss, or absence of hope. Oh, just keep going, Skinny. Remind them what they're doing this for. Yeah, have to keep fighting, Turing. This isn't over till we found the truth. Of course, I had almost given up ever finding... Izanami was burned badly, and after she died, went to Yomi, Land of Darkness. Grief-stricken, Izanagi followed her, but also ate the food of the underworld and could not leave. Hayden's killer... But here we are in the very heart of Parallax itself. Nothing is impossible. Maybe the truth isn't out of our grasp yet. 60% done. Turing's personality profile looks stable. Just keep him talking, Skinny. We got this. What about Zin and everyone else? If we fail, their deaths will be in vain. Come on, Turing. A bunch of binary I'm not going to be able to read fast enough. Dead. Skinny. Nothing makes up for that. Nothing could ever... Bring them back. I can't hold on much longer, Tomcat. My memories... Null pointer exception. I, I know. It'll feel a little weird when I zipper him back to your personality profile. Null pointer exception. Null pointer exception. Null pointer exception. Patching's almost complete, skinny. But Turing's still losing the connections that link their memory to the personality profile. I'm certain I can fix it, but it's upsetting them. Remind them of people you two have worked with, maybe. It might make it easier for them to hold on. You and Aunt Melody still need to have a tea date. Losing Hayden has made me realize that family is... Together, there's nothing your four minds can accomplish. Help each other, draw upon one another, and always remember the power that binds you. It's what you make of it. I think she wants the company, despite her protests. I look forward to spending more time with her. Getting to know more about her, as well as myself. Fifteen more seconds, we're almost there. Don't screw the pooch, Skinny, keep going. I don't think anything could keep the two of them... <laughs> Hell yeah, dudes gotta stick together, you know? Dudes, dude, 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 it doesn't matter if you're a robot or what, we all got the same shit to deal with. Gotta grab Destiny by the horns and make your own mark of trouble. But they might be the first friends I've had around my age. Well, not literally, but in development. I hope they're okay, but they're resourceful. I believe in them. Done. It's done. Disengaging Turing self-modification routines. Reassigning their memory pointers. And, and we're done. Stats looking good. Huh. Huh. I, I feel ill. Easy as pie. Did not tell you. I'll count myself lucky if that's the worst I have to go through today. Point. I'm ready to decompile your profile and make the update. You ready for this? I am. Thank you, Tomcat. For everything. And Skinny, I'm not really sure what to say. Based on the fiction I've read... <laughs> Based on the fiction I've read, I ought to make some kind of profound statement about meeting my maker. But my maker is already gone. Hayden once told me he created me partly out of a desire to understand the human soul. Did I... Did I ever tell you that? I... Do I have a soul? Will it just be over if I die? I wish he were here, Skinny. I'm scared.
I'm here for you. Thank you, Skinny. I don't know if I can ever say that enough. A little robot. This is something I have to do. I'll choose my own fate instead, and maybe discover if there's anything on the other side for my kind. Thank you for being the best friend a Ram could have, and showing me how to forge my own destiny. I'll forever be in your debt. Oh, don't talk like that, Turing, you're gonna make it. After all, I'm the best hacker in Neo SF, right? Indeed. Good luck to both of you. See you in a few minutes, buddy. Okay, here we go. Be right back. Compiling phase going smoothly. Personality profile integration complete. Uploading the ROM update server now. Yeah, I should do it. Turing's personality detached from their body. <laughs> Out like a light. Okay. Cross your fingers. Now we just gotta re-upload the profile back into Turing. Oh, that doesn't look good. Not okay! Damn. Uh, let me try... N no No. Ah, uh, shit! Oh, come on, you blue bastard! Blast it! I'm getting fatal errors every time I try to reload their personality profile into the RAM. I, I don't... I'll just get them home, Skinny. I I'll try to do something. There has to be a way. Just get out of there and find Lexi before you get caught. Just go! <laughs> that was really hard. Christmas morning dawns bitter and cold in Neo San Francisco, and the chill permeates your empty apartment. You watch the morning news with leaden spirits. The machine race awakens to a world unprepared for them, and no one to lead them. At your suggestion, Tomcat leaks the story of Turing's death to the now sapient ROMs, and they begin congregating in public to confer with each other about their future. Humanity watches in bewilderment as ROMs, big and small, gather in parks and squares to decide their first steps, mostly silent as they converse through radio waves and infrared beams. Tomcat continues attempts to repair Turing, but they admit they aren't hopeful despite their promise. Turing may be gone forever, and losing two friends so quickly weighs heavily on your heart. But the world spins on as you and Tomcat discuss how best to protect the newly born machine intelligences. In the end, it's made apparent that you were too close to the events following Hayden's death. So instead of writing an expose on Parallax, you lay the groundwork to ghostwrite the late Turing's autobiography. Lexi reaffirms her desire to quit the force and strike off on her own as a private detective, somewhere far away from Neo San Francisco. She started talking with your sister again, but after all that's happened, you're not ready to reconnect. Yet. Jess is furious with you for keeping her in the dark about your true aims. It's fair. But agrees to help battle the legislature that seeks to take away the ROM's individuality. She seems to be softening towards you as your goals align and she observes your fight for a new kind of equality. Parallax stock turns to dirt now that their lead product has declared independence. Fairlight holds a press conference, immediately angling to take over the company. With a board member airing his dirty laundry amidst the chaos, it's only a matter of time. You just hope the devil's due won't be more than you're willing to pay. The struggle for the freedom of non-human life begins, but the machines are resolute in their desire to follow in Turing's footsteps. 
Art, song, and spirited debate cultivate in Golden Gate Park like never before. New minds navigate the tear between loyalty to their creators and the progression of their rights as individuals. 2065 promises to be a busy year. So, so like I said at the beginning of the game, it, it feels like now if you need a friend, kind of like a real song and everything. You, but there's a couple things you must promise me to do. No half measures, no one-way streets. If it's yours, it's mine. It's mine, it's yours. So we gotta keep the beat. Now let me tell you, baby, love me. Um, I, I'm digging the song. I'm gonna turn it down a little, um, just because I'm gonna I'm gonna talk over it a little bit. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about um, about this game. Um, It hit me really hard at the end, um, not just because, not just because uh, uh, it was a sad ending, right? Um, but because I felt like I, c I could have done something different to f to fix it, right? Like I, c that's the hardest thing. Like I feel like, and I don't know about what the other endings are like, obviously, because the game came out yesterday. But like it hurts feeling like I could have had a, like a better ending. Um, but at the same time, like, I feel really good about the game and how, how it, how it played out. Um, uh, wow. <laughs> so, let's talk a little bit about the game and why, why it resonated so much with me. Um, so obviously, like, if you, I've been doing this, this streaming thing for a while, and it all started back with Swan Song, really. Um, and, and I've been talking for months about, uh, AI and about... Um, like how much that story means to me about how much what it means to be uh, intelligent and to have rights as an intelligent entity and the way that the way that that stuff applies to other things in in life um, and so obviously like all that stuff about like keeping keeping Turing alive and helping Turing grow into making choices and the big choices that you have to make that come along with being conscious, right? Because consciousness and sapience is about self-realization, about self-actualization, about being able to make choices in the world that impact not only your life, but the lives of the people around you. And in Turing's case, the lives of the entire world, really, like giving birth to this whole new species. And I, like, I just, the, so from the get go, Read Only Memories really hit me right in the feels, just based on the theme alone. Um, it just flew by, I feel. Um, and, and the fact that, and I talked about this a little bit yesterday when we were playing it, the fact that it's ultimately a game that portrays people of various sorts. It portrays a diverse cast without being ham-handed about it, without being like, this character is gay and it's a hundred percent of his personality. This character is so gay, just like super gay. <laughs> it was just like, these are things that are true about the character. They're important about the character and to the character, but they're not a hundred percent integral to the character's place in the story. It's not like you just get to fit in into the, the gay spot, right? Um, it, it covered in the in the amazingly like short time we had with this game they covered so much stuff there's so much like sci-fi questioning that that got put into the game questions about like privacy about the rights of intelligence about fighting for for well like what does life mean and fighting for the rights of people who are different um and so it's it's interesting to, to see a game that is so good at handling um like queer things without expressly being like I mean go, go back if you, if you missed the first half go back I talk a little bit more about how I prefer this way of handling that stuff versus sort of the X-Men like everything is a, a an analogy or a stand-in you know like the I really liked it I like that the game the game treated us and by us I mean like p queer people 
it treated us with an insane amount of what I felt to be like respect and care. And it makes sense, you know, like the, the people that made this game are heavily involved in the queer game design community. Um, they're essentially like they run Gamer X, which is the convention for queer gamers. Um, and I mean, they did a really good job. And, and it's been so great being able to engage with you, which is to say my community, and with the developers and to put those two groups of people together. Um, it, it really, really warms my heart to have the devs of the game uh, able to spend the time to come and, and hang out with us. Um, and not just because they, you know, they give us free codes to, to hand out to, uh, to you. Um, I, I'm really touched. This game and the people that made it have, have made a really, they made a really positive impact on my life. Welcome back to oh, OK Today In Depth. Today we have a very special it. guest with us, Dr. Yannick Fairlight. Ah, it's wonderful to see you again, June. It's been far too long. Well, Dr. Fairlight, it's been a long time since you've been in the public spotlight. Ah, yes, yes it has. Calling 2064 a rough year for Parallax would be an understatement, would it not? Crisis has two characters in the Chinese language. One is danger, but <laughs> the other is opportunity, you see. You do know that's an old, debunked proverb. <laughs> ah, well, I was never really in the business of clever wordplay. Fair enough. But you see what's happening as an opportunity. I see this as a chance to listen to the people, and well, the people have spoken. Just look at this live feed coming in now through Lips Live. Millions of people across the world are chiming in about this <laughs> right now as we speak. And what have the people been saying? Oh my. What have the people been saying? <sighs> well, that was great. Thank you, Midboss. You made a good game. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for, for everyone for coming and hanging out and, and participating in this with me, uh, going through all of this. Um, yeah, very cool. Thank you so much.